Lieutenant Benson, say hello to Peter Stone. He's the hotshot out of Chicago who's going to be special counsel in the People versus Rafael Barba. The nice news about Philip is that he is as nice a guy as he is good looking. I mean, he is just one of the easiest actors that uh, we've dealt with a, a, in a long time. He just came in, didn't make a ripple. He's not going to make a ripple on SVU, except that he'll, it'll seem like he's been there for years and months. He shows up, and there's a transition, and he and Mariska have both clashes and uh, moments of, it, it's a rich, dramatic environment to put him in. What do the people say, well, there's not a lot of character in these shows? There's a lot of character if you're a regular viewer. You know an enormous amount about a surprising number of the characters. You don't go home with them, but you do know what drives them, and it'll be the same with Philip. I mean, he carries his own history with him, and he's got a show history, a fictional history that's pretty interesting. When Sam Watterson came in for the read-through for this particular episode, it was magical, you know, and he, he, he speaks at, he's giving the eulogy for a character at the top of the episode, and I was just wide-eyed watching him during the read-through, so I was so happy to get to meet him and, and just to get to see him work a little bit, you know, I wish I had had a scene with him, but um, I'm glad I don't have to play a, an, an attorney as well, so I'm okay. Well, you know, I'm I'm very excited. Philip Winchester is here to come and play and um, to to further create his character of um, you know of this attorney. I, you know, of course, personally, I've worked with Raúl Esparza for years, so I was kind of like, oh no, you know, like what's going to go on with him? And you know, and it's it's classic. It, I think they they handled everything in a very very classy way and. Um, you know, I, I sped through that script. I, I really, really enjoyed reading it, yeah. That episode, the entire thing, every time I, I every scene I did, I was in tears because of the subject matter. Um, you know, and it's it's a right to die case. And, you know, it, it's, it's crazy because at the end, Barbara does get himself in a sticky situation because now Peter Stone is serving as a special counsel and he's up on the stand. So, um that, you know, he, I don't think he's ever done that before, Raul. And, and so watching, watching that unfold in court, I think the audience is really going to be riveted. I hate that, that there's this many shows that can be ripped from the headlines. I hate that there's that many cases where people do this many bad things to each other. But it is a testament to their talent and to their, their diligence and research. You know, they really come up with a case and they really research it all the way around it. And then, of course, it goes to the imagination, the playground of the writer. Um, and they get, to, they get to kind of riff off what's, what was maybe based on a true story and, and really make it SVU material. Um, and people, people still respond. And, and it's, so, it's such a beautiful thing to be walking out on the street and people are, are such dedicated fans of SVU. You know, that's something I... I don't, I don't mind at all, and I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of a show that actually kind of shines some light on some really dark issues. Well, the, uh, the episode starts at a, a funeral where Peter Stone, uh, the character from Chicago Justice, is in attendance at the funeral of his, his father, and uh, Sam Watterson as Jack McCoy is giving the eulogy, so it's amazing to have uh, one of the, the gods in the pantheon of the Law & Order universe um, on our show. Um, so that's how the episode starts. You have this introduction of this character into the SVU world, and then we kind of get into the, the, the case, which is um, a child, a uh, baby, who's terminally ill. Uh, one parent wants to um, do what she sees as the humane thing, and um, for lack of a better word, put the child out of it. It's, it's misery. Um, the other parent wants to keep searching for a cure and prolong the life as long as possible in the hopes that the child will somehow recover or, or um, be able to live a healthy life. Um, so it's, it's a tension that's kind of born out of love of, of both parents as to their love for the child and, and how they can um, best serve that. Um, and that leads to all kinds of conflicts, obviously. Um, which the characters get embroiled in, and we all come at it from different angles with our own different personal perspectives on um, what, what should happen, and it, it, 
it creates a very moving, moving episode. Whenever somebody new comes in, you're a bit suspicious because also when you work, you know, this closely, I think a job like this, which is kind of actually similar to be, being an actor, the people you work with, you know, they become, they become like family because you're around them all the time. You spend so much time, you're dedicated, you've dedicated so much of your, your time and energy to this, this job that, you know, you see them more, more than, as more than co co-workers, you know. So I think um, this new guy comes in and you're kind of like, hey, I, I loved the other guy and he was very special to me and, and who are you and what do you bring to the table? And of course you judge them compared to the other person and you're biased towards the other person so you kind of, uh, you really force the, other, the, the new guy to prove themselves in a way. Um, you know, you don't have that built-in trust. You don't know if they're a good person. You don't know if they're, they have good intentions, you know. So th certain things you take for granted with somebody that you know and you've worked with for years and years, you know, you don't extend them that same courtesy. Um, so, but in terms of uh, Peter Stone being very black and uh, white and by the law, you know, I think uh, my character, at least, Carisi is uh, a lawyer. He's passed the bar, so he could practice. And I think he's kind of very similar. Like, I think he's kind of a uh, stickler, stickler to the law, too. So maybe that'll be a, a point where they can kind of, you know, get along. I don't know, you know. But I think um, we're going to give him a fair shake, for sure. Michael Moriarty, Ben Stone, I remember watching you know, him when I was a kid with my mom, you know, waiting for my dad to come home from work and we would watch Law and Order sometimes and he would be the, the, uh, the, the ADA. And I always thought he was so uh, incredible. And here we are 20 years later and his son, it's, it's almost like full circle, you know? And I, I think, um, you know, there's something very s special about that and you, you kind of get a sense that how far reaching the show has been you know, how it's, it's spanned generations and decades and what's happened in terms of the culture and, and, and everybody and this kind of wraps it all back to that, which I think is kind of a, a, great, a great thing. There is obviously a, a formula to it and it, it kind of operates in a way that, you know, shows which are much more serialized now, we still kind of have the formula where we bring in elements of other episodes, but still it's kind of each episode can stand on its own, you don't have to necessarily see what came before, what goes afterwards. It's, it, each episode is kind of like a, a little, a little movie with a beginning, middle, and a, a resolution, at least in terms of plot. Um, and I think that really has benefited us because we can um, kind of sit and just be sponges of what's happening around us and where the culture is going, you know. And I think SVU has changed, changed dramatically from when you watch the early episodes, and you know where you know, society has gone and society informs our show. So I feel like we're constantly in a, a dialogue with, with the culture of today and, and, and the show. I think you can see that in things like the Me Too movement, uh, trans issues, all these things. Um, so we can address that and it's great because we have this, the structure that we've built in that's been going on in the show, not just SVU, but Law and Order Original and all, all those things for 20 plus years. So we have a structure that exists where we can kind of plug those things in and then really just jump in and tackling the issue or, you know, the, the complications that arise with these issues. Well, Stone comes in. Uh, he's a new ADA. He's uh, kind of there because Raul has gotten himself in some trouble. And that's never good on this show. So, um, you know, we always have a kind of reluctance to new people. We look at new people. We don't trust them. They, they're not part of our team. We're very comfortable with Barbara, but um, you know now we got to figure out wh where Stone stands. Uh, our show is always a, a moral play between what's right, what the police are supposed to do, and then how people really feel, and that can get the cops in a lot of trouble. Again, it gets Barbara in trouble. Well, there's always there, there always is some form of clash, but that makes good television, you know. Um, if we welcome everybody with open arms, there's no tension there. So they like to make some form of tension. Uh, I think Finn, he's about the easiest one to, to, to bond with, but then Finn is ultra protective of Olivia because uh, like in one episode, he says, she's the only one that can do this job. It's one thing for me to be a male detective, but in a special victims unit, which is these things strike so close to home for her, she needs to be in charge of this thing. And, uh, you know, 
whether I'm moving up. I, I don't I don't really want to run this unit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to protect Liv. And she, you know, we've been together for so long. So, yeah, uh, anyone that's coming for her, they have to kind of come through me. I think that what makes SVU so important is that, you know, we're dealing with living victims. Uh, the things we're addressing, it's not like a homicide show where the people are dead. The people that watch this show, a lot of them are survivors. A lot of them have been through some of these incidents. So it strikes really close to home. In a way, a lot of this, these shows are therapy. And, um, you know, women that have been through sexual abuse or, 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 or child molestation, all these things we deal with, they kind of want to see the bad guys get their due. And on the show, even though it's not reality, you know, I play the guy that kind of, you know, handles these people the way the viewers kind of wish it would have happened maybe for them. A lot of times they didn't get justice. I think that's one of the reasons it sticks. No, there is a good who done it. Who done it shows or that you know you start the show and you're you're trying to figure it out, so it allows you to play detective with us. And because it is law and order, just because we catch the bad guy, excuse me, because it is law and order, does just because we catch the bad guy doesn't mean they go to jail. So it kind of plays out like reality. Um, another thing is due to the fact the shows don't connect, you can watch season five right up against season nine, right up against a season you know nineteen. And it doesn't matter because you don't need to see them in order. So I think those three elements uh, make the show rewatchable over and over again. And uh, also, I think it's therapeutic. Peter Stone gets a phone call that his father's sick, and he comes to New York to take care of him. Um, and while he's here, his father passes away. And Peter Stone is dealing with the fallout. He's dealing with uh, you know family stuff and with the realization that he's the only one left. And uh, he meets up with Jack McCoy, played by Sam Waterston, which was, um, for me as an actor, outside of the character, was a, was a, it was a big deal. I mean, I grew up watching this guy on Law & Order. He did it for 16 years, I think. And uh, yeah, it was a, it's a, he's an amazing guy. Um, so anyway, so Jack McCoy brings in Peter Stone and says, listen, we have a case. We have something that's gone, gone wrong. My ADA has been involved in something here. There's a right to die case that has come up. He's involved in a way that I can't discuss, but I need your involvement too. And Peter's not sure about it because he left New York to run away from his father, basically, to run away from the shadow that his father cast on him and his career. Um, and so, you know, Jack McCoy is a pretty convincing guy. And he convinces Peter to stick around and, to, and look, at this, look at this case. And so that throws Peter Stone into this world with, um, with Barba that he didn't expect. And Barba's up against the ropes. Um, and look, what, what happens is ultimately um, Peter Stone ends up staying in, in New York a lot longer than he thought. All these worlds are colliding. He, he wanted to be a baseball player. He hurt his arm. He wanted to be in Chicago. He was running from his father. Now he's thrust back into this world. His father died. He's the only one left. And it all kind of comes crashing down on Peter at this moment. And we have this nice moment where we get to see Peter's human, and he's broken, and he's fallible, and what mattered to him and what matters to him is not what he's showing everybody else. And so, um, I don't know, it, for me it was an amazing experience because prior to shooting that scene, I was having a costume fitting, and I saw Sam Waterston walk into the courtroom. We were, I think we were crossing over on our costume fittings or something. And the courtroom was empty. No, we weren't filming in there. We were filming on the SVU set, or in the, in the um, detective's set. And uh, Sam just walked in through the back door. And I kind of hung back. And he walked into the middle of the courtroom. And he looked at the prosecutor's chair. And then he walked into the middle of the courtroom right in front of where the judge is. And he looked at the witness stand. And he just walked over to the witness stand and he just put his hand on the corner of it like he's done thousands of times before in these shows. And then he picked his hand up and he thought about it for a second and he walked out of the courtroom. And I just, I just, I was just by happenstance happened to be walking by and uh, it was pretty powerful. I don't think he knows anyone was watching. It was a little, not to be creepy, but I just stood back and I was like, man, this guy is a legend. This guy, I mean, this is his world. And he created this stuff and the stories in these walls and the stories in this courtroom. And so to be able to see that, and what was neat was that was before I shot that scene. So I kind of felt like I could 
draw from that a little bit and put a little, put a little bit of that story into Peter Stone, and um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes Peter has a difficult attitude because he is, he's like his father. It's black and white. The law is the law, and you do what you must um, to uphold the law. And so in this first case, it is, it is a case of feeling right and feeling wrong, and then a case of the law being the law. And so he instantly clashes with Barbara's character. He clashes with Benson. He clashes with the whole SVU department because he comes in to do something from, and from their, from their side looking in, it's going to affect one of their people big time. Um, and Peter doesn't care because it needs done. Um, I think subconsciously, without giving too much away about what happens in the case, Peter genuinely doesn't want this to go the direction of his argument. But it has to be done in such a way that it looks like that from the outside. And so he comes in guns blazing and, um, and he makes his case. Clearly when we, you know, when we talk about these worlds and we talk about this stuff, we have to bring up Dick Wolf because they're his. They're his ideas and it, it was his brainchild from the beginning. Um, he's, he's an incredible guy because he, this is what he does. He does TV, and he's the godfather of television. He has the Chicago franchise. He has this. Law and Order's been going on now for how many years, you know, combined with the first one, and then Law and Order, the original. There was the, look, there's just, there's so many versions of these worlds, and he knows what people want to watch, and I think that's why they're still around. He makes good drama. He gets people involved who want to tell stories. He gets writers involved who have their fingers on the pulse, and he makes it happen, and he doesn't stop. He doesn't rest. And you can see that in the work. You can see that in the type of people working on these shows. You can see it in the stories that are coming out. He, he just gets it, and he does it better than anyone on TV.